Mota Zutabanaka C. Welcome to a special edition of the Worst Fantasy Show. We are doing a couple of short videos to recap the NFL draft as far as fantasy football is concerned. And so this is the five worst NFL drafts for fantasy football, starting with, of course, the slam dunk pick that was number eight, Michael Penix Jr. to the Atlanta Falcons. Do you want to see me dunk? Sure. Yeah? Okay. Are you guys ready? I'm okay. No, don't worry. Does that always happen? The Falcons messed up this whole entire draft by taking Michael Penix Jr. at number eight. Uh, and honestly, the rest of the draft didn't make a ton of sense either. Uh, in the second, they take defensive tackle Rook or Aurora. Uh, they take Braylon Trice uh, in the third round at uh, pick 74. They take Brandon Dorless, another D tackle at pick 109 in the fourth round. Follow up with uh, J.D. Bertrand. And then in the finally, we get some offense in the... Sixth round, 186 and 187 back-to-back -back picks. They take Jace McClellan and Casey Washington and then finish up with yet another defensive tackle in Zion Logue. So very pitiful draft, frankly, for the Atlanta Falcons. This was by far, I think, the most lamented, uh, laughable, uh, it's not even subject. I, I think, frankly, this was dragged by just about every analyst, fan, uh, reporter ever. Like, I have yet to see really, frankly, like, you know, even the most optimistic of takes has been like, um, you know, perhaps Michael Penix can be a thing. But it's like, frankly, even in the in the realm of, oh, we needed a backup quarterback again. If you wanted to really go that path and really shake things up, you could have taken J.J. McCarthy, who I feel is a better fit for the offense, matches more of what Kirk Cousins does as opposed to uh, Michael Penix Jr. And he's younger. So if he sits for a couple of years, then you still have uh, at least a decade of, you know, his prime. Whereas, you know, Michael Penix, uh, already 24 years old, uh, is if he's sitting for three years and then if he takes the Jordan Love path, just for the sake of argument, like he'll be 28, 29 by the time he sees the field. Like what the hell were they thinking here? This was honestly like, uh, this was like uh, a magic bear coming down and Falcons fans reacting like, like uh, the parents from Ted. Merry Christmas, everybody. <laughs> Jesus H. Fuck. Honestly, like, just I, I still am befuddled by the Atlanta Falcons and what they decided to do. And it really, like I said, it, it sent almost like the whole draft careening off the rails. Uh, next up, number two, and I think this is, again, not going to be widely disputed. The Dallas Cowboys told their fans they were going all in, baby. Go fuck yourself. And by all in, they meant we're not going to really sign anyone or even really draft anyone. Uh, not only did they not really draft anyone, it felt like, um, and there were reports and the stories, you'll you'll see them out there, um, that after uh, fucking uh, the owner, Jerry Jones, gave away the pick of Jonathan Brooks, who ended up going to the Panthers, that almost stubbornly they just refused to draft a running back after. Uh, so you get Tyler Guyton, offensive tackle at pick 29, who I guess is supposedly replacing Tyron Smith, but he's still kind of raw, um, and you're going to need him to start right away. And then again, after you get sniped by the Panthers, you take Marshawn Nealon in the second round. Uh, okay, that adds to the defense. And then this is the thing of like, okay, now you're in the third round. You have a chance to redeem yourself. Do you take Blake Corum? Nah. Let's say Cooper Beebe a guard. Okay, I get it. You need offensive line help. Okay, what about Braylon Allen in the late third? Nah, 
Let's take another offensive uh, out. Sorry, another outside linebacker and Maris Lufau. Like, I don't know what the fuck they were thinking. Then they take Kalen Carson uh, at pick 174 on the fifth. And then finally, Ryan Flournoy. I'm sure he's a great kid, but at wide receiver uh, at pick 216 in the sixth round, like all you have on this roster outside of CD Lamb in the wide receiver room is like Jalen Tolbert. Uh, I, I don't even know if Michael Gallup's still around, like the bones of Michael Gallup. Uh, you still have Brandon Cooks kicking around. Like you, you could have, you know, given a little more firepower to Michael McCarthy and Dak Prescott, but this was just a huge swing and a miss for the Cowboys in this draft. Uh, also, they did take Nathan Thomas, I'll just say it, at 233 in the seventh round, but again, just Massive swing and a miss uh, for the Dallas Cowboys here. Next up, the New York Jets. What the hell was that? I didn't even really necessarily hate what the Jets did. I just thought it was more confusing than than bad. Like, you pass on Brock Bowers, which in my opinion is a huge mistake. Uh, you take the need instead of the superstar tight end. You take uh, Olamui uh, Fashanu uh, offensive line, but he's already the third best guy off the board. You know, you already had um, the the guy for the Chargers, Alt, and uh, and then you had also the Titans took, um, I'm forgetting his name, apologies, but that there were two tackles already off the board. You take the third best tackle instead of, again, generational superstar tight end potentially in Brock Bowers. And then I do like Malachi Corley at 65 in the third round. Uh, they definitely needed some wide receiver help outside of Garrett Wilson. Uh, but then this is where it gets confusing. You take Braylon Allen at 134 in the fourth, and then you also take Isaiah Davis in the fifth round. You already have Brees Hall and Israel Abanacanda. So it's like, Obviously, to me, this is going to chalk out as Brees Hall one, but then who kind of knows for the rest? I I think a Bannock Handa might be the guy who kind of sees his way out of that situation, depending how Isaiah Davis takes to the team. But, you know, then they get a backup quarterback in Jordan Travis at 171. I like that. And the Mr. Irrelevant pick, Jalen Key, uh, safety at 257. To me, I just felt like they really missed on Brock Bowers and that, Definitely is going to be something that they end up regretting. The New York Giants staying in New York here. I mean, you know, Malik Neighbors at six is a chalk pick. I get it. But then Tyler Newbin, uh, the safety at 47 in the second round. Andrew Phillips, defensive back, 73rd round. And then Theo Johnson. I do like Theo Johnson. That's a solid pick. They didn't need a tight end. But you're replacing Darren Waller, who left uh, via retirement. And then you get Tyrone Tracy Jr. in the fifth round. Awesome. Love that. He's a great sleeper running back that I'll have in a lot of my drafts. But it's a downgrade from what you had supposedly, at least on paper, in Saquon Barkley and Darren Waller. And then you needed a, a quarterback. And the only other guy they took here was Darius Mosau, uh, 183 in the sixth, a defensive player. So they come away with no backup quarterback. You're still stuck with. Daniel Jones, Drew Locke, and Tommy Cutlets. Hey, I'm still on the team over here. And the only other real loser, and this was very specific for fantasy football, the Los Angeles Rams. You guys fucking killing me by taking Blake Corum. I really don't blame you, though. This wasn't on the Los Angeles Rams. The Chargers should have taken him at pick 69. They ended up going with uh, some linebacker. I feel like that was the only pick that I I didn't like that the Chargers made. They'll be in the best portion of the drafting. They did get Kamani Vidal, but I really wanted Blake Horm to go to the Chargers. I thought 100% he was going there. He lands with the Rams. He was really like the only offensive player they took before the sixth round. High draft capital running back third round, higher even than Kyron Williams, who's already on the roster, and who was going in the first, second round of fantasy football drafts and that's where it definitely is fucking things up for fantasy and that's it for me and the five worst drafts for fantasy football make sure you super kick that subscribe and follow and i will catch all of you guys on the flip side